Okay, today we're going to find the total volume of solid figures um, composed of two non-overlapping rectangular prisms. So the example that we used in class was we took a um, figure that was made um, three long, two high, and then two wide, and we made another figure that was two long, two high, and two wide. And this one right here had a cubic um, unit of 12, and the green one had a cubic unit of 8. So we talked about different ways to put them together. If I put it together like that, I can see that it's 5 long, 2 wide, and 2 high. So if I take the formula, it's 5 times 2 times 2, which is going to give me 20. Then we talked about sometimes we might have a figure that looks different. It might look like that, which it doesn't work to write a formula for. However, if I know that this bottom one is 12 and I know the top one is 8, I can add them together. So 12 plus 8 would also give me the 20, ub 20 units cubed. And it doesn't matter which way I put them together. I can put them together like that. I can put them together like this. I can put them together like that. Because the number of cubes is the same, I will always get 20 units cubed. And I can, I can answer that because I have this figure that is 12 units, and I have this figure that is... Um, 8 units, and 12 plus 8 is always going to give me 20 units. So when I have two figures, I can figure out the volume of each and then add them together. We'll look at some examples. Okay, um, this first example here, I'm missing some measurements on cube B. So I'm going to start with cube A, and I want to use my volume um, formula, which is the length times the width times the height. And this one is 12 long times, I've got a 9 here, but the 9 shows, or it's times, sorry, times 8 deep, times, now I'm looking at the height. So I've got a 9 here and a 5 here. I want to make sure that I use this 5 because the 9 shows it for the whole side and this 5 shows it only for block A. I want to make sure I take the correct measurement. If I show the 9 centimeters, that shows for block A and B, and I want it for only block A. So I have 12 times 8 times 5. So what do I do is I would multiply that together. Um, 8 times 5 is 40. I'm actually going to do that first. And that'll give me 12 times 40. That gives me 480 centimeters cubed. Now I want to find block B. So remember, I'm going to find the volume of each, add them together. I can see that the depth is the same. I can tell by the picture it's the same as block A. Well, block A's depth was 8 centimeters. So I'm going to start with 8 centimeters for the depth. However, I can't tell how long it is. It's not labeled right there. But I know the bottom portion of this is 12 centimeters, and I know this portion that's not, um, that's not covered by block B is 9 centimeters. So I can figure it out by subtracting. So 12 minus 9 is going to give me 3, and that will tell me the length of that side, that missing side. So, so far I figured out 2. The depth is 8, the length is 3, and now I want to figure out the height, which is this portion here. And again, it's not labeled. The nice thing is, I know the height of both blocks together, and I know the height of just the A block, so I can subtract again. I can start with the height of both blocks together, which is 9, and I can subtract the height of just block A, which is 5. That gives me a remainder of 4, which would be the height of block B. So I have 8 times 3 times 4. 
3 times 4 is 12. I'm going to multiply that by 8, and I get 96 centimeters cubed. And if I want to figure out the volume of both, we're going to add them together. So 480 centimeters cubed plus 96 centimeters cubed. I get 506 centimeters cubed. I'm finding the volume of two separate cubes and then adding it together. We'll look at a couple on the homework. Um, on the front of your homework, I want you to cross off C. There's some mistakes in the picture there. It doesn't make sense. And we're going to look at some on the back of your homework. Okay? The first one we'll look at is number three, which we started together in class. So you have two identical cubes. The cubes are exactly the same. And we know that together, if I add them together, I get 250 cubic centimeters. So if I want to figure out what each of them is, um, I can split that in half. So 250 split in half is going to be 125 centimeters cubed. But the question asks, what's the measure of one cube's edge? So I know you have length times width times height, and that's giving me 125 centimeters. I know because it's a cube, I know each of these has to be the same measurement. So it's the same number, and it's got to multiply to get to 125. So I'm thinking of numbers that I can multiply that'll give me a 5 in the 1 spot. And if I count by 3's, I can see, okay, 3 times 3 is 9, okay, um, times another 3 is 27. I'm not really getting 5's. If I try 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, I'm not really getting 5's again. However, if I try 5's, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, I'm seeing a lot of these fives on the one spot. So five is a good number to try. Five times five times five. Let's try it and see if we get 125 centimeters. Five times five is 25 times five more is 125. So the missing side, the measure of one of the sides would be five centimeters. And you wouldn't cube it, because remember, I'm just talking about a linear measurement of one side. There's only one measurement there. Um, this one is talking about a fish tank. This is kind of similar to what we did today. However, it's talking about the water level. So I'm picturing like one cube being the water level and another cube being the empty space. So it says the base area, so the area in the bottom of this fish tank, the area is 45 centimeters squared. If I look at volume, volume is length times width times height, and area is length times width. So I know when they give me the area, I just have that first step done for me of the volume. Now it says it's filled with water to 12 centimeters, and I know the tank is actually 25 centimeters tall. I want to know how much more water I need to to put in it to make to fill the tank up. So this empty space, I need to know how much empty space is there. Well, I know I have 25 over here and I have 12 over here so I can subtract them to find that that missing section. So 25 minus 12 is going to give me 13. So I know this this empty space is 13. And I already have the length and the width section done. So what I want to do is figure out the empty space area because we're adding water to fill the tank to the empty space. So 45, which is again my length times width step already done for me, times 13. And if I add it together, I get 585. So 585 cubic 
centimeters. The problem with that is I'm talking about water. So I probably want to write it in a liquid measurement, which we talked about yesterday would be milliliters. Since there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between a cubic centimeter and a millimeter, or a milliliter, the measurement is still going to be 585. So 585 milliliters um, is needed. Okay, last one. They talk about three rectangular prisms. They have a combined volume of 518 cubic feet. Prism A has one-third the volume of prism B, and prism B and C have the same. When I talk about one-third, I talk about one piece out of three. So prism B is one-third, or prism A is one-third of B. So B would be the full three pieces, and A is just one-third of that. And then it says B and C have equal volumes. So there's C. So I end up with a picture that shows me seven equal pieces. I know all together I have 518 cubic feet. I want to figure out what each little piece is. So I'm going to take the 518. Because I know all these pieces are equal, I can divide them. There's seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven will go into 51 seven times. Seven will go into 28 four times. So I know each of these little pieces is 74. And now I can answer the question. So prism A is 74 um, cubic feet. Prism B, well that's 74 times 3. So prism B is 222 cubic feet. And prism C is 222 cubic feet because again, prism A and C, or B and C have the same volume.